The previous video introduced integrals and talked about how the fundamental theorem solved the problem of doing integrals. I only did a little bit of integration rules, linearity and the power rule, but in the next two videos I'm going to do one of the major integration rules, the substitution rule. Other than this important rule, the remainder of the major integration techniques will have to wait until the second term of calculus. So why the substitution rule? Well, it is by far the most important and useful of the integration rules, and I want to give the first term a decent exposure to the theory of integration. The substitution rule is the best way to do this. So let me get into it. The substitution rule is the chain rule in reverse. Here is the chain rule. The derivative of the composition is the derivative of the outside evaluated on the inside multiplied by the derivative of the inside. A key part of this process was labeling the inside with a temporary variable, u equals g of x. Well, the easiest way to reverse this is directly. If I have an integral that exactly fits this pattern, then I can just do the chain rule backwards and then add the constant of integration. How do I keep track of the information here? Even if I have such a nicely set up integral, it doesn't arrive telling me what f and g are. I need to label them. Therefore, I do the same as before. I use a temporary variable u for what I think is the right inside function. While this was a bit optional for the chain rule, depending on what notation you preferred, this u is essential for the substitution rule. This u is, in fact, the substitution. It is the thing that I will use to replace. However, the integral is complicated. I will replace u with g of x, but what about the rest of the notation? In particular, what about the dx? So far, I've only said that this dx is part of the notation, and that it tells you what the independent variable is. That's true, but it also has a role here in the substitution rule. I can't just replace dx with du. Instead, to do this replacement, I have to differentiate the substitution. du is replaced with g prime of x dx. With these two, I can replace everything in the integral, g of x with u, and g prime of x dx with du. The result is the integral of f prime of u in the variable u. The du here is still doing what I said it does. It's telling me the name of the independent variable. Then this is the integral of a derivative, so the result is just the original function f of u plus a constant according to the fundamental theorem. Then at the end of the process, I reverse the substitution, replacing u with g of x again. This is the general idea, but it's pretty difficult to understand without practice. Let me show you how it works in examples. Here is an integral which looks like it might be in the right form for the substitution rule. Substitution rule will eventually apply in all sorts of settings, but what I am looking for now is a composition with another term that might be like the derivative of the inside. This looks promising, with an inside x squared plus 1 and an outside 2x. Let me try the substitution with u equals x squared plus 1. Unlike the chain rule, where labeling the inside was a bit optional, here labeling the inside is necessary and something I expect you to do in assignments and exams. In addition to the substitution itself, I need to know how to transform the dx. This is done with the derivative of the substitution, and the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, so du must replace 2x dx. Now I try to replace things in the original integral. A very important note here. I have to replace everything that involves the old variable. An integral which is only half switched, which involves both the old and the new variable at the same time, doesn't make sense. When you do substitutions, make sure you change everything, all the x in the old, all the y, uh, u in the new. In this case, x squared plus 1 gets replaced with u, 2x dx gets replaced with du. The result is the integral of u to the 4, which is an inverse power rule, the antiderivative is u to the 5 over 5 plus a constant, and then, to finish, I reverse the substitution and replace u with x squared plus 1. This is the final answer. Here is another example. It looks like I have a composition with an inside x squared. The x outside also looks promising. Let me try u equals x squared. The du is related to dx by the derivative 2x. du equals 2x dx. However, if I look at the integral, there isn't a 2 there. 
So sometimes I'll need to do some more algebra to make the substitution line up. Here I can divide both sides by two. This leaves x dx on the right, which does match up with the inter original integral. And this is the key idea. I do whatever I need to do to match the original integral. Then I do the substitution. x squared is replaced with u. x dx is replaced with 1 half du. I pull the 1 half out by linearity, and then I can integrate. The antiderivative of e to the u is still e to the u. Regardless of what the variable is called, the exponential is still its own integral and derivative. And then I add the constant of integration, and finally, I reverse the substitution. Here is another example. This one is a bit stranger. The first two examples of substitution rule were really looking to match the pattern of the chain rule, inside functions, outside functions. However, the substitution rule, now that I know how to apply it, has much more utility than just this case. Here is a substitution which doesn't immediately look like a composition. One thing that substitution can do is simplify denominators, since sometimes the integral becomes easier with a simple denominator. Here, I'm going to substitute u equals x minus 2 to make the denominator just the variable u. I also need to change the dx, but the derivative of x minus 2 is just 1, so in this case, dx gets replaced directly with du. And finally, I also have this numerator, which I do need to change. To do that, I'll do some algebra with the substitution. If u is x minus 2, then adding 2s to both sides tells me that u plus 2 is x, and I can use that to replace the numerator. Now I can replace all the pieces. Remember what I said earlier, everything in the old variable needs to be replaced with a new variable. I never mix variables in these integrals. In this replacement, the numerator becomes u plus 2, the denominator becomes u, and the dx is replaced with du. Now I have a simple denominator, and I have an addition in the numerator. I can break up the numerator to get 1 plus 2 over u. Then I can use linearity to split this into two integrals. I know how to do each. The integral of du is u, and the integral of 1 over u is the logarithm. Finally, I finish with reversing the substitution. There is one more subtlety with this final answer. There is an arbitrary constant at the end, but there's also a minus 2 in the middle. Since c is unknown, I don't really care if this constant is c or c minus 2, so it's pretty common just to write c here instead of c minus 2. This step is not at all necessary. The first form here is a perfectly valid answer, but since this is a common simplification, I thought I should still mention it.